Okay, so the first thing is I'm going to give you a sheet of lino and you can buy it in lots of different sizes. Now, the difference between this is if you all just feel, can you see that? This one has been in front of the heater. So it's a lot easier to cut once you um, heat up your pieces. So putting it in front of a window, um, putting it in front of and heat it up while you're working on something else. So I'm going to get a pencil. I'll show you how to do it and then you will cut it up yourself. So then I'm gonna take a metal ruler and I'm on top of a cutting mat. I'm gonna get my knife out. Now, you can see it's like a good few millimeters thick. So it actually doesn't like being hacked into really hard. Now, very easy to cut your fingers. So being safe, do a little bit of that at a time. Now I can actually feel the knife getting deeper into that. Can I just bend and break that one? Okay, now this lino, you can actually do double-sided. So if you want to do a little bit of testing, you can. I've also got some older pieces of uh, different types of lino that we've used in the past. This one's the best one because it's really nice and soft. And when we get time, we'll have a little play with that. But at the moment, we're going to do the, um, the blue and the green one. Okay, so cutting into it. So I've got some tools here for us. And there are different types of tools that you can... Oh, it's going to be hard because... Oh, I'll take one of these. There's different types of tools. So there's a V, um, there's ones with arches and arcs. So I'm only going to play on one side. This is called uh, what's called a bench hook. And I would encourage you, I will be making you use a bench hook can have a look? <laughs> uh, so that you can do it. So what this does is it helps hold it. If you're on your table, you tend to have to hold everything, but your bench hook is a really good way to um, help have help holding your work and, and making sure that you're cutting away from your edge. And then you just, oh, it's nice and warm. I can feel how easy it is. Now remembering uh, what you cut out will not appear and then what you leave on will appear. So I would encourage you to be working out your drawings so that you can, uh, plan, planning your drawings so that you can work out what you want to print or not. Okay, cutting, cutting, cutting. Now remember, what you cut out is important, but what you uh, leave on is important as well. You're cutting out, remember I was saying with the picture of the tree, the marks that you cut out, the pattern that you can create there can also be incorporated into your piece. So don't just hack away, think about the direction in which you want to go in as well. Okay, printing. Now printing, um, you can use a piece of glass, but I find in the art room it's just safe to use a bit of um, acetate, some plastic that we've got going on. And then I've got my paint and I was so close because I didn't get a knife. I'll go get a knife. It is because now I have to wash my fingers because you have to handle your um, paper so much. Yep. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of paint out and put it on my plastic. And then I'm going to take a roller and I'm going to roll my paint. Now, you don't need to cover the entire piece of plastic. You only need to get enough to cover your roller in a nice, even consistency. And you can hear 
the stickiness of your paint as well. You've got to find a balance between it drying out, it not drying out, being able to create your print, making sure that you've got enough on your roller. It's a bit of a trick, it's a balance, but it works out really nicely. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll it on my piece. Now you can actually see what I haven't covered so far. Do I get some more paint? Do I just try and... So sometimes will the paint go on the parts you've cut? Yes, yes, for sure. Now I can still see I haven't cut, got that little bit in there. So you can see that I've got paint on that. You can take it off, you can wipe it off if you want to, but I actually like that in this particular piece because it's almost like a little bit of distance in your forest. Okay, then I'm gonna take my piece. Now we can go through the press as well, but when, when you're ready to, I'll take you through that process. I'm gonna put that on. Now I'm considering, when I'm putting my paper down, my print down, I'm actually considering the presentation before I even put it down because that's a natural thing for me to do. I'm gonna try and make it even on both sides and the top and make the bottom a little bit um, higher. Now, it moves sometimes, you just gotta be careful not to move it. Then I'm gonna take a clean roller and roll over the top of that. And running it through the press is the same sort of thing. If it works. And then getting off, you've got to make sure you get it off properly. Ooh. So that's your liner print. That's what I would like you to have a go at doing. Okay, so um, you can grab a piece of lino, you can start to put your drawing on, uh, bench hooks and everything. I'll show you where that all lives in the room. I would love you to be cutting today. And there you have your print. So you can actually see in this one here that there probably wasn't enough ink in here. And this sort of effect was that negative space that's being cut out and that sort of makes a nice little forest sort of, forest sort of edge. You can print it several times to create your forest. And see, these are just some of the ones from the other linos that I showed you. Here's another one. It's the same process that they've used the um, lino to create their print. And then what she's done is she's actually taken that little bit step further and really got rid of that paper, which we're so prone to being able to print on. I think she's printed on maybe a lightweight canvas of some sort, fabric of some sort. And what she's done here is they've actually painted a little bit of ink in these leaves. On it was, and it was all, the background was the same color. So the piece was a little bit lost. What she's cleverly done is she's actually cut out one of her prints, got the same piece of fabric, stuck it on, and then um, mounted it on the black as well. So that presentation has enhanced that print um, a, a lot, and that's quite clever as well. Okay, so here's another clever print. And I know I keep saying that everything's clever, but I love the way these people can push themselves outside their boundaries and have a little play. Um, I know she's painted uh, or had a play with doing different colors and different surfaces, but what she's ended up doing is it's a bookcase printed on newspaper and then pasted on brown paper that I've just kept because it came in a bit of packaging. So again, very clever. Here we have the lino block. And I actually forgot to mention, they're probably about 14 centimeters by about 11 centimeters. And then the whole thing sits in a little concertina booklet. You can see that. Now the image that she's created, uh, they've all, t all the students have taken their own images. And this is very linear and it's got a little sense of depth. And then what she's been able to do is, I think this is about two or three prints that's been pasted together. This has been printed on, uh, looks like a sort of a gray on a black. 
This has been printed with um, black on white paper. And then this is a piece that's been cut out of black paper. So there's really a lot of layers in that and really a lot of spatial depth with her foreground, middle ground and background. And again, you can see that thought has gone into the presentation. So there's that little white trim of an edge and then put onto black.